it's not really a lost river, but if you Google Goshoka, you get like 12 hits and half of them will be in Sami and the other half in uh, Norwegian. Google Maps doesn't even um, have the name correctly for this river. Usually my expeditions are all about suffering. We like do these shows where I demonstrate how much of them I can kill in one strike. It really is a teamwork effort. Tragedy struck. It's undoable, man. And it's getting warm already. It's six o'clock in the morning. So getting here was uh, pretty awful. It's a couple of thousand kilometers away from my house. So yeah, it's to be expected that it's a long travel, of course. Um, but then they lost my bag and it was a chaos at the airport, etc., etc. So yeah, I start on a bit of a downer, but we're going now and the weather is good. That means it's raining. And I want there to be a lot of water in the rivers forward to leaving civilization. Yeah, longest trekking I ever did. I did know what I was getting into, um, having planned this thing meticulously. Um, but even if you have some experience under your belt, it's uh, still hard to predict what it's going to be like when you're in the field. This is the little mountain, uh, very recognizable in the field, I hope, of Nuarvas. And from this mountain, my hope is to find the start of a river that I want to pedal down in that direction. But to get to this mountain, I need to hike a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of pathless terrain. And I will be coming from the town of Kautokaino in North Norway. Luckily it's completely clear where I'm going. Wait up, I actually know what that is. The geodetic arch of Struve. It's an earth measuring device. Wind's picking up. Kind of bad, actually. But the mosquitoes are gone. Yay! It's snowing. It's June 22nd. So the day after the longest day. It's um, 7 o'clock in the morning. But it's been light like this all night. And the early stages of hypothermia just a minute ago. But it's uh, going, getting better now. The feeling in my fingers is starting to return. And the shivering is stopping. I feel that when you're still in those early stages and you're almost done packing, if you get going, your body starts working start generating your own heat and that is how you get out of this trouble so I'm just gonna hike hard now warm up again and get some miles under the belt Woo. yeah shocker just a couple of hours before that, I, uh, it was intensely warm and I was sweating all over, didn't know where to go. Um, and then all of a sudden you're freezing your ass off in a snowstorm. Yeah. I've done some uh, winter camping and I know that you must not fear the cold. You just have to keep calm, keep smart, carry on. And then later that day, just as quickly, phew, heat returns. Yeah, that's the weather at these northern latitudes. 
the most northern um, latitude I did was 70 degrees. That's uh, the same as, I looked it up, Alpine Alaska. I want to shed a layer, it's so hot. Now, I want to shed all my layers, but it's not possible because of all my little friends here. Ugh. When the Arctic summer sun burns, it does so 24 hours a day. not huge but I'm gonna have to wade across so I'm taking off the boots taking off the socks put the boots back on wade across and then I have dry socks Marking. Customs is ready for me now. Are you ready? Well, that was rather painless. You develop these little strategies to um, to work with the mosquitoes. You can't get rid of them, um, but you can do these things that that's just gonna reduce the pressure a little bit, like eating standing up. And um, I had this special pee strategy. I I will not demonstrate. Yeah, but what really helps is elevation, wind, dry terrain. Smoky fire, I tried that a couple of times, they didn't care. This is the first lake in the river system that I am trying to backcraft. Uh, but I checked the outflow and it's not big enough to boat, but almost. So, this is where you start looking for the headwaters of a river. Sadly, not big enough to paddle in. Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to follow it um, until it is joined by some other streams and the runoff of marshes. Um, until it's big enough to boat in and then it's off and my wife just informs me because I have a satellite communicator um, that there's a flood risk in the little rivers such as this one I have to sleep here which is just so sad on so many levels so I am um, uh, experienced uh, also in some pretty rough circumstances 
um, but the combination of uh, intense heat, uh, a lot of mosquitoes, no wind, uh, that was just completely new to me. Um, and it took me a very short while to realize that the gear that I had with me was mosquito proof, uh, but only if I was completely covered in clothes or in my sleeping bag. And uh, that is just not something that you want to do when it's uh, 30 plus degrees Celsius. So yeah, and I, actually, I couldn't solve that problem. Uh, so I just had to learn to live with it. But um, uh, sleeping in your, um, your non-breathable raincoat in 30 plus degrees centigrade gets old really fast. I think this is an exciting part of the journey. Um, it looks like the tiny stream at Goshoka now is, flows here through these marshes and it disappears in the mud. Um, but water can't flow upwards now, can it? But give me a couple of hours and I will have found the stream. I feel I'm getting closer. All this runoff goes into the little lake over there. The second in the string of lakes that eventually forms my river. The more the better. So I'm skipping this one and going for the next viable option here. I'm giving the middle one over there a shot. It's still an hour hiking I guess. So it's a bit of a gamble, I'm going for the big one, um, if it doesn't work out, if I cannot boat here, I'll be stuck down there for 8 miles or so, I have to carry my boat over rocks etc. Let's check it out. This is it, I'm going for it man. It's not even half a decent creek, but I really have no other option. And this just looks boatable. Um, first crossing this lake, find the outlet and uh, then we'll see how it goes. I have carried my pack rafts 120 kilometers all the way here. Took me uh, four and a half days, yeah? They were the most tiring days of my life. Okay, really doing this. <laughs> I just entered the boat in the dumbest way I've ever done and um, I'm full of water already. <laughs> that's, that's totally my fault. I can't blame the background. There are some swans there um, that are already not very happy that I'm here. Uh, but they will live. On the way to the first runoff channel from the lake I'm doing. Look, that's pretty much what I hoped for. Let's see if it's deep enough. Yeah, totally is. Alright, let's go. That didn't last, obviously. Um, it's going to be uh, a lot of this today. So when planning this thing and when I made my time schedule, I had this like dream image in my head of that river that it, it would have no white water and it would be a nice and deep but still swift a sort of a highway into the arctic i kind of based this on only the images on google maps uh, yeah so intellectually i knew um, uh, that it might as well be very different shallow river slow etc but that that mental image was just hard to shake a weird experience. 80 kilometers of this would be pretty awesome. It's 
no bad to do this. Water is nice and fresh on your feet. I'm not breaking any speed records. So far, the pedaling has not been a huge part of it. Um, that is not to say that it's not fun, it is actually improvising. This portage is very difficult, but not completely impossible because something makes tracks here and the something leaves huge droppings. I'm stuck. I'm getting the boat out of the water. I was wondering if I was the first one uh, to attempt to Paddle down Goshoka uh, from its source uh, to the end. Um, but I, I must be the only guy dumb, dumb enough to try it. I'm, I'm completely stuck. I just found the river back and it was flowing the wrong way. Holy crap. Well, we're uh, picking up speed now. I haven't been out of the pack raft in about 15 minutes and um, scraped the bottom, yeah. Uh, quite a lot, uh, but it just keeps moving, which is fine. For your information, I'm not wearing all these all these clothes because it's cold or because I don't like being wet. Um, it gets the mosquitoes, um, and everything is uh, mosquito-proof that I now have on, except the tips of um, my gloves. I really want some um, mosquito-proof gloves; it would be a lot better. Yeah, yeah, I, I had these um, uh, sandwich bags, plastic little sandwich bags, under my gloves. So this part was mosquito proof. And only the fingers, there were normal gloves there. Uh, but these mosquitoes, like magnets, they always found my fingers, like straight away. Awful. And then later on, um, uh, much later on, I was in a little village. And I had a logistics stop there and I bought a pair of these yellow household gloves. Not exactly an outdoor item, but man was I happy with those. Tragedy struck. Um, it, the river was pretty strong. It got caught between two trees and it broke off. End of story. Um, the pedal blade landed in the river and it was visible for a little while. I hoped I could catch it, but then it was forever lost. Now I am pack rafting with a single blade pedal, which is possible but extremely silly. Um, so I have decided that I will make a new blade. Um, and I'll do that tonight, not now, because come on man, I'm having fun. So that was just an awful moment. Uh, you can see me on screen being uh, pretty emotional too. Um, so all the time I'm thinking, you know, maybe I started something that just can't be done. Um, what if my food runs out before I ever get back to civilization? And uh, doesn't feel good. And just when I thought, you know, the speed is picking up, I might make it. Bang! Broken pedal. Okay. I'm way out of cell phone reception range, right? I'm in the middle of nowhere. My wife just wished me the best of luck and she ordered me a new pedal in Karigas Niemi, uh, where I will be in a couple of days. So I, I, I'm just gonna walk in there and say, hi, do you have my pedal? And they will have my pedal. Yeah, this is just the law of numbers. If a million are trying to sting you and few ever succeed, that still ow, means ah, you get stung a lot of blood. Arctic summer. I woke up this morning, groggy, looked at my uh, clock. I have to start it up first, so it takes a while. Nine o'clock. Oh, 
got out of bed, made everything in order, um, ready to go. Look at the clock again. 4.30. What? <laughs> oh, I just... I got up at 3 o'clock at night. Yeah, okay. Well, now, now I'm packed to go, so I'm going. Whatever. The leak. Can you hear it? Somewhere up here. That's a bummer. To my great joy, the pedal works really well. Um, I hope it lasts. That's a concern. Um, and also to my great joy, I just had a section of, you can see where it overgrows there, right? Um, but the river is bigger now um, and I was able to, uh, to pass through. So I hope we can do that again. Well, I, I really don't want to, but I gotta get out again. More bushes over there, less bushes over there. And I think this is where the moose gets out. This is where the moose gets back in. But that's not gonna work for me. Hey, I don't know where I'm going then. Took about half an hour. I'm knackered. I so hope that this was the last section of those bushes that crossed the stream. <laughs> It's undoable, man. And it's getting warm already. It's six o'clock in the morning. You know, th my pack raft is almost unsteerable as it is. So most of my strokes are just pushing off from the side and letting everything happen. Oh, look, there we go again. Um, I'm, it's not actual boating, but I am having a lot of fun here. Um, so it's, it's kind of like being in a ride in a fun fair. There's nothing you can do but just go with the flow and push off from the sides. Okay, there we go. There's a stream from the left joining the main stream over here. It's starting to look like a river already and it almost gets the actual name Goshoka River. It looks like the wild beast has been tamed. And by tame I mean pretty tame. Listening to birds. I actually just fell asleep. Waterfall coming. Yep. Yesterday was a very fun day. I can see why this river is not attractive as a paddle river. Um, it's more about the expedition, I guess. It's about half the time you're out of the boat pulling it on the line or carrying it over land and it's a complete wilderness immersion uh, there's nobody here nobody and nobody ever comes here too so anywhere you look every every time i see something colorful i think see that's um that's a piece of trash that somebody left behind so people do come here and every time no it turns out to be a part of a flower or whatever no people come here so today, hopefully, the end of this river, where it has its confluence with Anarioka. Anarioka eventually becomes the Tana Elf, the big river, <coughs> the great river. Where all the water from all the rivers in this area uh, flow together to form Tana Elf and flow together to the Baden Sea. Excited! Great weather! Wind is the best thing you can have here because it keeps the mosquitoes in check.
feel so much like walking your dog that I, I just can't help but to say stay sometimes or come here. I'm, I'm aware it's not an animate object. So it happens more that I can just keep paddling on sections like this instead of having to get out all the time. So that's a good indication for the rest of the day. I really hope that we can do more paddling, less lining, please. Oh yeah. We're making it through. It's shallow as far as the eye can see. Yay, got a paddleable section again. It doesn't feel like a very serious job, this. You know, little winds, nice and sunny, with your feet in the cold water. It, it, it feels like a summer vacation, which basically it is, I understand. Usually my expeditions are all about suffering, which I'm really good at. I've, I've, I think it's my core quality that I can take a beating really well. Um, and somehow I always get myself into the position where I have to take a beating. So this just, just feels a little alien to me. Check it out. I aced that tiny waterfall there. <laughs> it was super easy to be honest. I didn't have to do much. It took me five hours to do eight kilometers, and that's about um, five miles. Now, so that's one mile an hour. Um, that's not fast. And if I keep doing that, I'm not gonna make my goal. Also, I feel that what I'm doing now, it just has a certain speed. You can't really speed it up. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna walk faster than this or I will fall over. And I can't pedal any faster because there's hardly any pedaling section. So yeah, I may reconsider. I'm giving myself one hour. It's just really nice that there are also sections like this where you can float and it, you know, we're not going all that slow. And you're thinking, yeah, yeah, this could work, this could work. But these sections are always over pretty soon. I have to lie on my back so that the boat is shallower. This increases my chance that I can keep going. So you have this rough time schedule in your head for a complete trip. And you will have like one day spare, uh, just in case of emergencies. But in this case, I lost my spare day right at the start of the trip because of airport trouble. And um, then I broke my pedal. And then the river that I thought was going to be nice and swift and bears on the side, etc. turned out to be super slow. So yeah, you get a little nervous. My hour is up. I, I, I'm like Frodo. I know what I must do, but I don't want to. So realistically, I'm not making much progress. I thought to myself at first, you know, the fast parts will come. Um, and then it'll all be good. But the fast parts are not coming. Get out of the boat, deflate the pack rafts and uh, hike on shore. So I know what I must do, it's just that I don't wanna. So. I've had some much faster sections, still have to do some lining as you can see. But uh, yeah, decision's made, I'm staying in the river now. My average speed has doubled. It's a pack raft, man. They don't go very fast. So uh, it's still not mighty impressive, but enough for me to realistically reach my goals for the day. I told you the good stuff was still to come. I just dropped completely unexpectedly. In, in, and this is just the end of it, but it was a couple of hundred meters. Some serious PR3s. Woo! Sorry I didn't get in on film, guys, but that was kind of awesome.
Whoa, it's really happening now. It's been nothing other than this for a while now, man. <laughs> it's a bumpy ride, but I'm getting somewhere. Woo. I'm still doing the majority of my pedaling lying down, which is uh, weird. Um, I, th I don't think it's good for your shoulders. But maybe, who knows? Maybe my wife says, whoa, pop hiker, <laughs> your shoulders are good. I don't know. Um, anyway, <laughs> another thing is you can't really see where you're going when you're lying down. So it's always a surprise when you, uh, oh, no, this is gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're good, we're good. Uh, for real, I don't, I don't just lie here, I really pedal when the camera's not on, yeah? But this is relaxed. I think I'm, I'm just gonna keep doing this for a while. I like it. Enjoy the surroundings, which are awesome, by the way. Really good. The Arctic is not the same as I thought. I'm, I've been in the north a lot, above the polar, polar circle too. Um, but this, yeah, um, greener, more species, lots of birds, uh, lots of fish, uh, flowers. It's not just birches and uh, blueberries. I'm really happy I made the decision to keep paddling. It was a bit of a rough start of the day, but look how it turns out. And besides from having fun paddling now, I also have a rather quick paddling. So yeah, goals reached, fun had. The river has a much more braided character down here. It's interesting to, um, to see a developing landscape. That is Anarioka, this is Goshoka. And the rivers flow side by side for just half a kilometer and then the confluence is just around the corner. Almost did it. Goshoka did it all the way from its source to where it meets um, it, the other river and it ends. Um, awesome adventure, awesome. There were some moments of despair, yeah. Um, I can see why this is not a prominent pedal river. The hike in was um, difficult and um, the pedal out was a lot of walking through water um, or uh, crawling through br brushes with a pack raft on your back um, but it was doable and fun lots of fun actually and um, very pretty landscape the wilderness feeling was indescribable um, I haven't seen anybody or traces of a humankind in seven days at least maybe even more um, Awesome. Would I advise you to do the exact same thing? No, of course not. It's highly impractical. But would I advise you to also try something crazy like this? Yes. Find your own adventure, man. I deserve a cup of coffee. My adventure is far from over. Um, I'm combining this with a second adventure. So in fact, I still have to um, go about 300 kilometers pedaling and hiking. Um, I'm going to hike over the Varanger Peninsula. And how fitting that I am paddling the great river with the blade that was forged anew. The blade that was broken has been forged anew.